For almost 150 years, the Saratoga name has been synonymous with the finest quality, sustainably sourced spring water available anywhere. Saratoga carries on the rich tradition of its forefathers by crafting each stunning blue glass bottle with the same attention to detail and care that has been its hallmark for generations. Visit saratogaspringwater.com today or ask for us by name at your local market or restaurant. Saratoga Spring Water. Make every day exquisite. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Talking Horses, presented by Saratoga Water. He is the big A, Anthony Stabile. I'm Andy Serling. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Beautiful day here at Belmont Park. Talking about how it's a great day with the scratches. There's MTOs and AEs today. There's nobody from the bottom of the races come out. And it's a terrific card, nine race card, 85 betting interests throughout the day. And, uh, Fantastic. So there's nine and a half horses, virtually a race. And uh, racing's been interesting so far. Been good racing. And we'll get right into today's card. You head over to Naira Bets if you're not a member. No reason not to sign up. Use the promo code MATCH200. We'll match the $200 your initial deposit. Play through Naira Bets. Support racing in New York and keep the money in the game. Do not disperse it to outside investors. 50-50-50. Pimlico, Churchill, Belmont through the app only. Uh, bet 50 or more at each track and you're in a $15 bonus. Also, we have something at Lone Star today. You bet $25 to win on each of the stakes races, and win or lose, at least $25 to win, you get $50 back. Please remember, with both promotions, you now have to opt in. Well, do we, we know we have to opt in in the other one because it doesn't list it in the Yesterday's 50-50-50, you had to opt in as well. Okay. We should have those on the slate for sure so that we can be clear. Thank you for pointing that out. But maybe you need to check the site. But we need to be clear on those things. Anyhow, that's Lone Star. America's Day of the Races, 12.30 to 5.30 today, covering our racing and Churchill race number one. Uh, we'll kick the action off, and we'll start with a replay of the horse that you picked, the four lemon taffy, in the one dirt race that she ran. What do you like about this horse? I thought she ran well enough in the dirt race. She caught a muddy track. And as you can see, there's not a ton of moisture in that track. So I'm not too concerned with the fact that she's never tried dry, tra dry, gr dry ground because I kind of think that's closer to dry ground than anything else. I thought she ran well enough just off the pace. She showed some speed on the turf last time. She cuts uh, back to the main track. <laughs> And, you know, Andy, I think she's going to be uh, I, I, not necessarily going to be the be-all, end-all, but she figures to be the controlling speed today. And a lot of these horses have had multiple chances, and I'll take one that really hasn't disappointed as much. Yeah, she looks like the speed, and she certainly can win. I thought she was probably an, a poor favorite in this race, and you have to realize this is a horse that's only been entered to run in the turf. And while she did run second, she was 10 to 1 in a pretty horrendous field. And while she ran okay, she didn't take any money and did get some moisture in the track. It seems to matter to you randomly whether it matters well, or she not. Didn't, I mean, that race well, did seem to be a lot of moisture in that track. How do you know? Because I've been watching races since I'm in a stroller. But you seem to have a sort of, it's sort of a little random, wouldn't you admit, where you find wet tracks important and when you don't. In this case, it I don't doesn't think it was wet. I'm not. Well, it was. It was muddy, and, and it was. It was wet. It wasn't as wet as a muddy seal track, and it wasn't as dry as a fast track. Um, I, I don't care about wet tracks. You I do. I know you don't. But you summarily seem to care about I them. But anyhow. I felt like that was closer to fast than it was to muddy. That's all. Okay. Well, you know, we'll, we'll agree to disagree, but that's fine. Uh, the eight Storm Cat Lady, Stormy Cat Lady just seems like a better horse to me and more of a dirt horse. And I realize she's had her share of chances, and she's no superstar. It'll be interesting to see who's favored in here. I, I think the eight Stormy Cat Lady should be, should be favored. She's getting back on a dry track after running on the turf and running on a sloppy seal track. And she's consistently running figures that are significantly better than the four Lemon Taffy. Doesn't mean she's going to win, and I don't disagree with you. Lemon Taffy can obviously win this race. She doesn't seem like the speed, and she hasn't had as many opportunities to lose as so many of these horses. But to me, Stormy Cat Lady has really consistently faced better horses than she faces today. I think she should be favored, and I think she's a likely I think winner. she will be favored. 
Okay. I'll I bet do. you lunch she isn't. I don't. Why did we do the lunches the other day? By I don't way? even remember. I have no memory. It could have been either. a split ball. Yeah, I feel like you won two to three, so I'm going to give you two to three. Okay. And we oh, were, I thought, oh, I did. I won two. I didn't. I thought we had four bets. We only had three. I don't remember. Okay. Maybe we split. I'll give you one. What are we at? Seventy-five. I'll go to seventy-four. Okay. Um, you want? I'll bet you that the four is favored over the eight. I don't want to bet it, but I, I, I think it'll be close. I think it'll be close. What do you I think want? Not want to bet anything. You want to bet everything. <laughs> I don't like this one. Well, you announced that you said the eight would be favored. I think she'll be favored. Okay, I do, but, but you're not I willing to bet on it. I'm not willing to bet on it. No. I think the four will be favored, and I'm willing to bet on it. I know you are. Congratulations. <laughs> I don't have anybody else to really like in this race. I guess Galena. You, you have the eight fourth in here. So why don't you tell us what you like about Scott Alley and Galena over well, the just, eight? Galena's dropping from the special weight. Tried the turf uh, poorly last time. She dropped from the special weight to the claiming ranks. The others in here have all had chances, including Scott Alley. Uh, Rudy's short number with blinkers on overall are okay. They're right the around morning 20%. line has the two, the second choice. Yeah. This has been a, a week of comical it's morning lines. Hasn't it? Yes. Yeah. That's quite a morning line. I don't know. I just felt like Stormy Cat Lady had a lot of chances already. That was it. Okay. Race number two. Race number two. The likely favorite in this race is the five, Gabby Squared. Had I known you would pick the seven, I would have gone to five, seven in this race to make a difference. Chad Brown has respectable numbers. Maiden special weight to maiden claimers, the Terp. He's 30%, 20 for 66, $1.98 ROI. Solid numbers. I just think she's probably found the right field. I picked against her, but I'm not against her. Yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I don't think you could, I could have said it any better. Um, I, I just, I don't. I don't. might have just found the right this is if if you like her today i think you have to like her more based based on the fact that you feel like she's found the right bunch she has then really right her, like her right i mean she really hasn't done much running sure i find two back she runs a race from two back she's a pretty likely winner of this yeah. race and if i thought she'd be five to two and the seven seven <laughs> to two i would have picked her i don't agree with that line I mean, she's got to be close to even money in here right I don't know if she'll be even money, but I imagine she'll be favored in this race probably about eight to five or two to one somewhere in here even money seems a little low but I don't know. I haven't seen where the doubles are with some. Uh, see where the doubles are with the eight horse in this race when it goes by, and obviously yeah. the betting is a little bit. Um, right now she's yeah. about seven to five somewhere in there. So close to the even money in that five to two. So she was on the morning line. Let's hold off on the replay. What do you like about Sweet Mission? I just like the drop. Um, I think the Pletcher horses at this Philly did not have a good start last time. Well, you can show the trainer stat for Todd Pletcher. Okay. She didn't have a bad start last time. She broke about a half length slow. It wasn't anything major. No, I, I didn't say she, I said she didn't have a great start last time. Todd has good numbers. Okay, besides that, anything? I mean, I just didn't like her trip overall, but I mean. What didn't you like about it? I didn't like her trip overall. I, I, what from, didn't from, you like from, about from, it? from start to finish, I didn't like her trip. What, which part of it didn't you like? The whole thing. Anthony, specifically. You're, what? you're nitpicking today. No, I'm not. You're I want you to today. give us, tell us what about the trip. We're going to skip today. the replay of this horse. Okay. We're not going to show it. Um, this horse actually did have legitimate trouble in that race. You know, you want to show the replay? Let's show the replay so we can discuss what actually happened because there is specific things that happened to this horse. And I think it's important to be specific and to tell people what it is and let them decide also what you don't like. This horse is down on the inside and this rider just jammed this horse on the inside and really never gave her a chance to get any position. As you can see right here while the race is developing, he's just steadying behind horses. He's demonstratively staying inside and now he switches out and now he's been completely shuffled out of the race. So what happened was you had a rider that just badly lost position the whole way. And that's what I didn't like about the trip. Well, I, I, what I well, said you was had a from chance to start, tell us. Well, no. You did. She was, she. <laughs> had a chance. He fought her the whole way. I'm not going to bury the guy. The guy's not even, you know, within earshot of us. What's the difference you bury him? We're she, showing the race. I asked you to tell us no, to be able to bury no the guy. Point, Don't stop that nonsense. She at no point was able to run her race. And I, and I would, I'm going to imagine the way she was fighting Jaramillo last time, she's going to be a lot more forward today. Well, she won't be less forward. I just didn't like the is. trip from the bell. I mean, and I do think the start, while albeit not terrible, kind of changed the entire complexion of the race for her. You want to show her getting steadied for an eighth of a mile? Yeah, I don't. I, I think, think it's it starts important. when she doesn't break. I think it's important on this show when you say a trainer is good with something to show a stat. I think it's important if you say a trip is bad to tell and show people why. 
I don't believe anybody's helped by that. You and I just completely disagree on this stuff. Um, Alpine Queens horse had had a bit of a trip in her last race. I just didn't think she finished that well. I don't know how strong that race was, but I wanted to include her in there. Do you have anybody else in here you wanted to Wicked use? Wicked Happy a little bit. I don't know. Wicked yeah. Happy keeps knocking on the door. She's a horse that I ordinarily would not uh, be endorsing because she's had so many opportunities. And you look, yes, half her starts have been on the dirt, but that means the other half <laughs> have been on the turf. She's 0 for 9. A lot of board placings, five thirds in her career. Uh, you know, we talk about finding the right field. She can yes, win. If Gabby Square drops and, and, and she may have found the right field, I think the same could be said for Wicked Happy with all of her chances. I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. She's fast enough to win, but she's had a lot of chances. Race number three. Race number three. What are we doing in race? Oh, we had. Did we have? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, shoot. Did we not show the Bruce Brown stat? Don't we you know the show it for race two? The one of the reasons I liked Alpine Queen. I'm sorry, it's my fault. Is this is race two? I know it's a silly sample, but he's claimed five maidens and run them on the turf, and all five hit the board, and three of them have won. That's a quirky number. That's just kind of an oddity, and I wanted to show that. It's sort of an odd stat for Bruce Brown. It's probably a bit random, but it did seem, especially for Bruce, it just seemed like it was worth pointing out, and that's one of the things that I thought was interesting about Alpine Queen. Excuse me, sorry for forgetting that. Race number three. So I have a question about race number three. I can't, I, Do we I can't really believe think you have this for a second. I know you're not the biggest well, fan of this This is a terrible pick, but we'll get to that. Will we really think where the shot's going to be favored? We'll take a look at his last race. Um, I know he beat Rinaldi, and fair enough. Rinaldi you know, but, turned out to be good and ran well for Jimmy Bond. Uh, but this not, was the day with the weird gate. It was, the not gate make, was angled wrong, and, and Rinaldi never got to break and, and show his speed, and this horse got in front of Rinaldi. I agree. He kind of got uh, the best of everything that day. I about the gate. I don't remember that. But. Yeah, something with the gate. I, know somebody, I think they sued. You remember this? Thank, Somebody sued. Thank, thankfully not. How did yeah. that lawsuit work for them? No good. Good. Okay, <laughs> it means they were probably wrong. Um, as far as worth a shot, he's coming off almost a year layoff. Now, and he's run well from November to June. I get it. Yeah. No, you know, that's, but, but, but little, now, now he's been longer. off. A, now he's got one race in a year and a half. I mean. I don't disagree. I, I get it. I suppose he could be favored. Um, and I suppose he could win this race. I'm just a little circumspect. I thought his wins are a little bit dressed up by circumstance. I don't disagree with that. I mean, you, when you take a horse like Rinaldi out of the race by getting in front of him, you know, you, you're taking away his biggest edge. And I know Rinaldi, that's an attractive name to see on these PPs. And the other thing is, doesn't he have to deal with yes and yes on the front well, end? Well, sure. Well, yes and yes is going to go. He's not going to be in front of that horse. Yes and yes is considerably faster But he's he going to, he has one from off the pace worth a shot. No, no, he has. I'm not... Yeah, I'm not over, overly concerned about that. I just think he's really had the run of the race in every race. Thought the pace would be a little faster. Why don't you talk about Lonesome Fugitive yeah, he's before I explain setups. to people why he's a terrible bet. So keep chasing this horse. I, I, and this is a little bit of a, I, it's kind of a Hail Mary at this point when you shouldn't be making Hail Marys at 5-2. to two. Now, I he's think this horse will be 5-2. He's probably the favorite. You really think so? Yep. Chad Brown, confusing race. They love Chad Brown. Yeah, the blinkers, I, when he broke his maiden, I thought he ran like a horse that was going to be okay, stretching out, going long. The next time out, he caught Montauk Daddy the day. Montauk Daddy just blew the doors open early, went 21 and changed. So what, though? Yeah, I, I always, I am. He used that argument for his last race, and I it did. proved to be wrong. I, so let's well, move past it. Well, it's not that it's wrong. Of it's course just, it was. He's well, been terrible in his race. He's been terrible. He's been, his last race was pathetic. I mean, his not bad. His last race was bad. Pathetic. His last race was bad. For a trainer who's excellent off layoffs. His last excellent race was bad. Excellent off layoffs. His last as good a trainer with turf routers off layoffs as there's ever been in the game. I have no argument that his last race so was bad. So why I'm are we the blinkers coming off are going to help this horse. I don't know. It's desperation by Chad. Well. You don't think it is? I don't know. I think was after, it set up by him? I think put after the, on twice and I take him off and the score last, at 640? I think the problem was after the, after the race with the runoff. The runoff didn't matter. The field collapsed. He had a perfect trip on the rail, and he stunk. Stop with the runoff. He's I had look, every kind I of trip possible, and he's failed to do any running. They put the blinkers on. It got him a little bit closer, and I don't think it's worked. Yes, because he's not very good. And that once again, this is another situation where if you didn't like this horse, and I would agree with you, you'd be all over the fact that his best race, his winning race, was on a yielding turf. But his problem is, 
Well, I mean, but I'll, you're sort of selective when that matters are to you. Races that far off? They, they're, they're, they are and they aren't. Speed figures on turf are very, very I'm not talking about speed sketchy. Figures. Do, you because think, it, do no. you think his efforts are that far off? Yeah, I think they stink. I think he's had his chance. He's had good trips. He's had three straight good trips, and he's failed to come close to getting it done for a trainer who always gets it done. And to me, I'm not saying he can't win. I've got him second. I know there's some pace in here. He's second off. I don't disagree he can win. My problem is that this horse, for with Chad Brown, every time they lose at a short price to me, it's a big black mark because that guy wins. It's the same with Todd Pletcher. It's the same with these guys, like the guys who win. When they don't win at this short prices, never it's been a favor black mark. This horse hasn't been favorite since his debut. So he's all, he's, he's also, never been a short, a big price. No, he's never been a big always price. a short he price. Hasn't. And he's always underachieved. Proven strategy effort was awful. Listen, I'm not saying he can't win. I, I just I just think this horse, this is a Chad Brown horse that is dramatically underachieved, and it's not Chad, it's the horse. It just is. I mean, this is just not a very good horse. I, I want Mo Faith. Look at Mo Faith's last race. I, you know, I know that Pompey will look and say, well, you know, he was able to boss the field around last time, and that's fair. Strong to gold's not bad. He came back to win, and he didn't run well at a mile and a quarter in the turf, but he ran reasonably well in his start and after this. Who says this horse needs to lead the win? This horse didn't yeah, need to lead the win first time. He off a, a decent enough pace first time out. And this just feels like an upside horse to me. And granted, his races are slower. The other horses are a little bit faster. Both the one and the eight are. And he may end up being the third best horse in this race. But if I want a horse with upside, he's the only one of the big three that has upside, right? I don't disagree with that. Well. But who has the upside? As, I don't feel as strongly, probably. I'm not ready to give up on a little fugitive yet. Well, but, I know he's trained by Chad. But yes. If he was trained by, by, if he no, was trained I, by I, Joe I, Sharp, again, you wouldn't have him I on have the top. no problem. I have no. That's, that's incorrect. Yes, it is. It's correct. That is incorrect. This is a, this is a Chad thing. My problem with Mo Faith is... So it's got a, a couple of pretty good trips. You're absolutely right. And that's the, that's the only mm -hmm. thing. That's you know? fair. You got a couple of pretty good trips. That's very fair. I, I, I won't argue with that. I'm very curious how they bet this race. Because like you said, I I, it's hard to see worth a shot being favored. I guess Chad... I, I, no, I agree. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what they're going to do It's a tricky here. one. It's I a agree. tricky race. It's a tricky one. I don't disagree with that. Um, any chance yes and yes wires the field? Yeah. I mean, and that's the... Uh, that the one of us out the horse, but... He probably doesn't want anything to do with a mile on a 16th. But he's going to have a tactical edge on these horses. And he's taking well horses. beyond price talking a mile 16th on this course. And he's going to take, he's going to use his best weapon and take away. You know, front runner's best weapon is their speed. He's going to take some, other, some, some of the best weapons away. Mm -hmm. No, I don't, I don't think he's totally impossible to, I don't either. to, to back this race down. Good alley -oop Johnny was a little interesting, mm -hmm. but he'd have to step up so... He just needs every single yeah. one of the favorites that, to not show up. Yeah. And even a horse like Lonesome Fugitive, who, you know, I give a speech on Lonesome Fugitive, I do have him second. I just, this horse. I'd rather Ali Johnny than Yes and Yes for that reason. I feel like Ali Johnny is not a question mark at the distance where I think Yes and Yes might have a little bit but of yes trouble. But Yes and Yes has the ability to, to win this yep. race, and Ali Johnny doesn't. Yep. So in that respect, Yes and Yes is probably a more likely winner. Race number four is quite a doozy. You just went to the old Noda train here, huh? No. No, not, not, not no. you. For some reason, I thought you picked Yankee Empire. No. Oh, my gosh. You picked Scotty again? You love Scotty. Do. You, I, love, I, you have I, a good friend named Scotty no. when you were growing up or something? No. He's like got he this saved was, you from drowning he's or got something this when you were a little to kid? Five? No, I had one friend, Scott. Scott Calise. Did How he ever gonna... do something great for you, like lend you money or something? No, he may have. Pull you like... out of a, of, a, of a river that was under tow? He used to work at the Genovese. How about that? Okay, Going let's back. not go in that direction. All um, right. it, it, when you think is, gonna be, how is anybody 8 to 5 in here? I, I don't know. I wouldn't want to make the line for this race, so I'm not going to. He got bet awfully strong last time. He did, did no running, but okay. I guess he could win. Yeah, he picked up. I mean, I got him third. I, I just, well, what's so appealing about him? He's going to be the favorite. You don't think he'll be the favorite? I guess. Well, who's going to be favorite over him? Frosted in, I mean, no, they can't no, make there's no chance Frosted favorite. Indians can be favored with with that trainer. There's just no chance that horse will be favored over over the floor, Scotty, and you know that. If I knew this horse was going to be was eight to five morning line, well, what price do you think he'd be? I don't think he was going to be eight to five. And how can you make eight, anybody eight to five? It could be six to five. The more I look at it, That's who scary. are they going to bet in here? I thought which Double way to Malibu, I thought which way to Malibu had a chance. He does have a chance. I agree. 
I think double pour is interesting. Double pour is kind of, you, you got the weird one, right? You got the Noda horse that can't get out of his own way in Yankee Empire. And then you got the Noda father-in-law with double pour off the claim. Ooh, get a little trickery whoa, going on whoa, whoa, I'm yeah. using the five. Neither one of us allowed the trickery to happen. We both, we have the, you have the horse second, I have the horse third. I think it's two not clever guys today. up here. Um, but my problem with Scotty is like, why? I mean, he can win. I, I'm teasing you, but it's a short price, and he just never really does much running. You meet Lou Loves the River, who I've managed to make pick like twice, and he stinks. <laughs> you know, like I've two stink. of my worst picks. I don't know, man. I, it's, 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 it's well, like you said, I think, was, you don't want to make the line because it's a no, it's I, tough I, race I, to handicap. I like the nine frosted, frosted Indian, actually. We'll take a look at him winning at Pimlico, two back. And he was in Claudio Gonzalez's bar. And the same person owned this horse. So it's hard to know exactly what the story was and exactly with the trainer changes and all those things, you know. He was training at Parks before his win here. It's Claudio Gonzalez at Parks. My, I know he's in Maryland, but, of course, so I'm a little wondering what the story and who actually was training not you know this is an interesting horse it's a horse that was the big speed in that super meltdown on february 20th mm -hmm. i tried those on march 21st he actually didn't run that badly in that race he was just badly overmatched i mean those horses are an hour and a half better than these and he breaks his maiden in a similar effort tries in a turf going long not sure why that happened and now he's just back in a race where there's other speeds. The three has speed. The five has speed. If not, he's got the perfect pose for stalking them. If not, he'll be in front of them. And I just thought Frosted Indian made an awful lot of sense in here. And he's not as, you know, he's just, just sort of not as exposed as some others. And I know that he and Scotty have a similar number of races, but he's actually done some running in his races. That race that doesn't look like he's run, where I feel like Scotty is the opposite. He hasn't done much running in races. It looks like he's done running. Not that he can't win. But I think the nine is just a more interesting horse in this race. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I probably should have put which way to Malibu on top just for the fact that because I because why going to be. Uh, what the, do you like about the, him? that Scotty was going to be a short price? You know, if you take the turf race out, the wet track race, and then the one, the True Palace race was a, was a strange race when he dropped in for the bottom, which is where he belongs. His one race for the bottom, I mean that that race where he broke his maiden back on Valentine's Day. It gets him a big piece of this. Mm, I don't disagree. I just can't trust the source. But I don't no, disagree. Can you trust I don't disagree. Any no, I don't disagree. I, I probably should have had him fourth in this race. I actually thought I did have him it's fourth. Hard to, I had to put the notice fourth because their horses do <laughs> seem to randomly show up. But he's a little tough to take. But um, yeah, that horse. But no, that, I don't, if I don't, that I, horse wins, I if the Noda wins, I'm losing. He's yeah, a little, I know he's what a little, you're saying. Real tough to make off his recent yeah, form tough. since being claimed. Um, and I don't think you're wrong about Mitchell Malibu, by the way. You're, you're, you're not wrong about that. Is That was a weird race. I actually picked him in the True Palace race, and he was atrocious. And then he comes back, and he runs the race that I'd hoped he ran that day, which would have won. Yep. I know. I don't disagree. I don't, I don't, I he's very – there's a randomness to him, though, and that's a, that's a little bit of a problem because there's no it's real reason he didn't run well in the True Palace race, and then he came back and ran the best race he ever ran, mm -hmm. one of the best races he ever ran. So I think the best race he ever ran, I think you're right. Yeah. Race number four kicks off the pick six. There's no carryover. The person was alive with a scratch, and I'm assuming it's the same person. They scratched and having it twice, and they ran one, too. So nice score. Congratulations to whomever that was. Race number five kicks off the late pick five. And uh, who'd you pick here? I went to Stanhope. Okay. okay. I went to Stanhope. Blinker's going on, cutting back um, off of the four-month break. I thought Stanhope ran okay last time. Really? Um, I, thought, I thought he ran okay. And I want to tell wow. you what. I think this horse's race is, in the beginning of his career, career sprinting. Well, he had one. Well, he ran one on dirt and one on turf. And well, he was on top of a very slow pace when he ran in a turf sprint, and he finished second in a monstrously slow pace. Not that he ran that badly. He ran better going longer. But you, what did you think was good about his last race? I thought it was atrocious. I thought he needed it. I thought it was a good race. I thought it was a good race in context and cutting him back for this. I, don't think his, I think it was a nice setup race for this race. What, and I don't, you don't, I don't think they're cutting back just sort of out of desperation? I don't. Really, because no. he's shown throughout his career he really wants to win going long because he's had one good setup after another and failed to get seal the deal. Yeah, which is why I think cutting back is going to help him. Well, it might help him. I mean, I'm not. Yeah, of course it's might. I think. I don't know. If You're I knew, I would tap out right? on him. I have stand hope that he's going to cut back nicely. Hasn't he just burned so much money? And I, I, listen, I've got him for it. He's, he he's burned it. I mean, yeah, but. Just I always get. We could say that about a lot of the horses in here. That's why they're in two lives. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yeah, but most of them haven't been as short as often as Stanhope has been. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe cutting back will help him. Blinker's on. He gets Castellano. 
I don't, I don't, I don't know. riding well. Yeah, had a good yeah. good last few days. Had a good run, yeah. Yeah, there's, I some, want there's some faster horses in the race. It should, but he should be. I can't imagine he's more than three or four lines off the lead. And maybe well, he's actually to projected to be the speed along with victory built. So he's not projected to be three or four. And I think if he's three or four off the lead, you're in trouble here. He's going to get in front. They're gonna, if the six goes to the, if the six takes his speed to the turf, they're going to get in front of the six. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be surprised if the six is in front of him, but I suppose you never know how they're going to ride them. But yeah, I, I would expect them to be. Victory built as well. Victory built moves yeah. his speed. These are from dirt the horses dirt going to the turf. turf. They don't really have any pedigree to speak of, so I mean, I don't no, they know. don't. But they have some speed. Maybe. Often these horses don't have the speed in the turf. I think Victory Bill has a chance to have speed. So I said, I said Victory yeah. Bill's the one horse I thought could be in front of him. But no, I don't. You know, I'm not going to take a big position on how the race will be run. I, I like Clamor a little bit. We'll take a look at a race he comes out of in Disciplinarian, and Clamor broke about a half slow and was sort of steadied and back behind horses, and uh, he is in. Absolute trouble in the stretch. I mean, he's waiting and looking for a seam here. You can see he has run. He's trying to find a place to run. And he's waiting, and you know, Junior's doing the right thing. And now he wants to run, and now he just completely sawed off when the horse with the yellow hat and the, came over there and just lost all chance at this point. And he is trying at this point. He is actually running forward, but he's trying to regain momentum. I thought he showed some signs in there. And the reality is he's run races that are fast enough to compete with these horses. Um, he comes out of a race two back where the speed held together. And you look at his races, he hasn't had that many races. Most of his recent races he improved were five furlongs down at Gulfstream. Six furlong races up here seemed good enough to win. He had trouble last time. And, you know, I hear you with, with, with the 12. He can certainly win this race. But, I mean, not, knockout punch was the other horse. I was going to pick him on top. Mm. Um, I thought he had a fair trance last time out, but it was a race where the pace really held together. And overall, he's got turf sprints that are better than these. I thought he'd be a shorter price. So I figured I'd use the 5 and 10 here and pick the one on top that I thought would be a bigger price. What about Silver Token? Is, aren't his sprints better than his distance races? You know, I always thought they were, but are they? I mean, one is, one isn't, right? Yeah. It's just I mean, a bit I think, of a hanger, think, right? Yeah, I think the, f I I think got him third. I'm the not. first two, you know, traffic pattern, the catcher, Probably better than what he's running. I mean, obviously going a distance, probably better than what he's running against in here. But now we haven't seen him since November. I don't know. I thought his sprints might have been a little bit better than his distance races. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I just don't think he's much horse. But I've got him third. You're I probably don't right. I think he's really impossible in here. What do you have like about half right that you have him third? I like the fact that this horse didn't run two steps on the dirt off of the off the layoff last time. And they're running the horse back on the dirt. They're just dropping the horse turf. in. So I'm sorry. Turf. Turf, rather. Yeah. And they're running this horse back on the turf. I, well, he stinks in the dirt, too. I guess. I guess. I mean. Okay. The yeah. drop, I'm hoping the drop helps him. Yeah, I just thought he was a horse who would take money because it's Christophe Clement, and you're right, he does get a big drop, and I just thought he was a good throw out because he can take money because of connections. But in this field, yeah, in this nothing field, will the, dramatically in this field, I, need to, I want to drop down. And I want, I'm going to mess with a drop down in this field a little bit. Okay. Race number six will come up after a quick break. We'll take a second to hear from our friends at Saratoga Water. Make business meetings. Exquisite. Make a weekend outing. Exquisite. Make a late night snack. Exquisite. Make a night on the town. Exquisite. For nearly 150 years, the Saratoga Spring Water Company has been producing the finest spring water available anywhere. Saratoga Spring Water. Make every day. Exquisite. Welcome back to Talking Horses. The big A, Anthony Stabile. Andy Serling, race number six. You got a whole host of these coming out of the same race, the eighth race on May 16th. Uh, you have taken nobody out of that race on top, as I haven't either. Um, that is an interesting race. One of my problems with this race is that the horse who may have run the best race is discretionary mark. So either discretionary mark has dramatically I'd like to watch the race, um, the eighth race from May 16th, if we could. Um, if discretionary Mark ran the best race of anybody, I don't know how good the race really was. And this horse, I mean, Javier was aggressive with this horse, and this was a very fast pace that absolutely incinerated in the late stages. Shiraz was close early, but he really got a good trip thereafter. I thought on or up, who looks on paper like he ran well, and he's actually run okay in the turfs. He really never did any running. He was just sort of running in place as the race was falling apart. And for me, 
Well, obviously, Shiraz can win. He's got back races. He's second off a layoff. But he's also not a winning type at four for 37. I thought the horse that might be a little interesting out of the race was Call Me Harry. I, I don't know what Joel was thinking rating him last time. Maybe he thought, well, there's a lot of speed in here. I'm not going to win the front end. And he would be right about that. I'll take and him back to fast. last. Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm not criticizing him for yeah. that and saying I'll take him back to last. Well, he's never going to win a race doing that because he couldn't win last time. Now, I'm not going to say he's going to win a race on front, but he's got to be more forward in this race today because the strategy of last time is obviously a losing strategy. For that reason, he's the one horse I'll use out of that race. Yeah, I think if you're, if you're backing him, if you like him at all today, you, we both have him second. You're assuming this horse is going to be a whole lot closer than he was Great. last That's time to what figures to be a more sensible pace. I mean, there's some speed signed on in here. I can't imagine they're going to go sub 44. Uh, <laughs> what do you like about Noble Emotion? You know, I had I didn't want anybody really from that race because I really I don't trust a Call Me Harry just didn't come back to run. I you know what I mean? I, I don't disagree. I think at all that with was you. a problem. Yeah. And if you take this horse's races apart, I mean. Maxwell Empire and Big Pack Maxwell, Maxwell Esquire and Big Package would be any price in here. Last time he made a move into the pace against open company horses like Duress and ahead of plant. Okay, his, but he lost he got buried. Yeah, but his other turf sprints against state breads. Well, his race at Saratoga good. that he won is a total phony because he was allowed to absolutely waltz on the front end in that race. So actually, I think if you take that race apart, it falls apart in your hands. It crumbles. I won't say he ran badly at seven furlongs, which may be a bit of a stretch for him in his next start. And it was a race that completely incinerated. I won't argue this race September 19th was OK. My problem is his win was atrocious. So I'm not really sure. And, you know, he beat Stanhope when he broke his maiden while controlling at a very slow pace, relatively speaking. So I'm not not sure he's ever really run a good race. I, I hear you, and you know I respect a pause. I, I, I thought about him. Trust me. I just thought his races kind of fell apart when you took him apart. I thought his last race was a good effort. Really? Yeah, I did. I Why? thought he ran well last. Well, I, I mean, when you consider that he, he made a move into the pace, took the lead, and he got run down by some pretty good horses. But he got beaten five lengths. He was but eighth. He, but he's also gone now a while, so I don't well, know. It was the end of turf season. It was the end of turf season, but he could have shipped this. I mean, he well, could have shipped this horse to somebody in Florida. I mean, Tom, Jonathan Thomas had York, the horse. He's a New York bred. Right, but it's not like we don't see New York friends go down to Florida. My assumption is you this horse missed some time. I don't think it was necessarily by design. So you think his last race was bad because something no, happened no, to no, him? No, I'm, I'm saying a combination is, of things. It could have been bad. Yeah, it could have something could have so went something, wrong. So, so either something he ran well, wrong. which I don't see, Listen, or he could His two wrong. prior races were not. I mean, forget about the dirt race, but. The Maxwell X race, right. He ran, didn't no, run he that didn't badly. Run badly. I'm not gonna, I, I agree. That's probably know, the best race he ever ran. I mean, if you look at his figs, he's tailing off a little bit all the way to the point where he misses the seven and a half months. Is he tailing off that much? He's tailing off. Listen, I mean, his 81 buyer at Cerdo. You know he wasn't going to dirt, right, because of how bad the dirt race was. And maybe you're right. He just didn't take a Florida bread to, to uh, New York bread to Florida. But I'm saying that it, something could have went wrong. Sure. No, no, something could have gone wrong last time. I, I'm not going to disagree with that. I, don't think he ran, I think the difference is you think he ran okay last time. I don't. I No, I do think he ran okay. It's a spread race for me. I mean, and I just wanted to take a horse that I figured I did not see the morning line. Not that it matters this week. But I, I wanted a, a horse that was going to be 10 no, to 1. It'll be a square yeah. price. No, no, I'm not. You know, I, I'm... I gave the horse a look. I'm just not sure he's that good. That was my biggest problem at the end of the day. But, uh, but I hear you. Um, listen. I can't really make fun of that that pick, and I make fun of it. I just we just disagree. I wanted to pick Call Me Harry. I just don't trust Call Me Harry, and I'll, I, I I figured I that Noble Emotion would be twice the price on the morning line of Call Me Harry. <laughs> Not I'm going to use price. discretionary Mark because he ran incredibly well last time, and now he switches to Rob Atris, who's having a sensational meet. So I'm going to use that horse, even though he doesn't have great numbers off of trainer changes on the turf. Um, I'm going to look at Thin White Dukes race at Saratoga when he lost it's a gamble who became a stake winner turf sprinting he won an off the turf Jersey Derby he ran second to hard love and has turned out to be a very good horse nice horse yeah the reality is that thin white Duke ran the best race he's ever run in here you won't see it from a figure standpoint but I think figures for two-year-olds in the turf can be a little deceptive in the especially sense the sprints, they, they right? can improve dramatically off of those numbers no I think the roots routes as well but um and I would say more of the routes, actually. But regardless, um, <clears throat> he lost to a good horse in that race. And he ran very well. And he improved on the dirt. But I'm not sure. I'm going to hope. My guess, my hope, is that he's a better turf horse. And at least he showed some life last time after absolutely stinking the joint up two races back. And while he probably should have been second last time, at least he got a 71 buyer. 
the best figure he's ever gotten. And now he goes back to the turf. Trust me, I, I don't love Thin White Duke. <clears throat> but I thought he was a little bit interesting in a price in this race, in a race where, like you, I just was searching for somebody. I'll be using him. I'll be using all my pick fours and pick fives. I'll tell you all my pick fives. My, no, pick fours and pick fives. What happened Only nine today. Um, I'll say this. He's coming back quick, but some of his better races have come <coughs> with less time between. So uh, he ran well just a week apart from Belmont to Saratoga last year when he got beat a length on the turf. Um, and then he ran well from the turf race on August 13th to the funny side that he that's where he broke his maiden so so you like him because he's running I, on short I, I, I don't it's not something that you have to be concerned with today I wasn't not but you thanks. man I'm talking about everybody <laughs> it's not just about you Andy two yeah. weeks you know two week turnaround is ordinarily something that bothers me but this horse has run well on a couple of occasions with three weeks wet less, tracks a are week. usually something that bother you but not in the first this, today this horse is going to be very it wasn't wet this horse is going to be oh, very it was a muddy is, wet ready dry track this horse is going to be very this, this horse is muddy dry track. a big price today and yeah. he's going to be at all of 15 to 1 because Maybe the not. money has to well the money has to go not, I'll tell you one thing he's not going to be go. he's not going to be 20 to 1 no he won't be 20 to 1 i say he's 15 to 1 but you know in, in the multis he's he's a he's all of that race number 7 let's take a look Did you pick Barista Vixen. Look at this, I, I guessed for you. We'll show a replay of your horse, Barista Vixen. What do you like about Barista I mean, Vixen? She's just in good form right now, and whether or not that's good enough to beat these, I think it is. But at the very least, I mean, you got a lot of horses coming in here off last out wins. The races weren't that fast that they won. She, at the very least, has been pretty consistent as of late, mm -hmm. right? When she went to the claiming ranks, she's talking about finding your friends. She's never been worse than second. She got beat a neck and a nose. For the tag, the day she got beat the nose, she was light years best. I just thought she made a ton of sense. She's she's went from Mott to Potts. Now she goes to Danny Gargan. Danny Gargan has lousy numbers off the claim. I mean, twenty-two percent. I shouldn't say are lousy. It's okay. Um, the ROI is not there. His horses take a lot of money. Basically, he's talking about eight, nine to five shots, and they're winning at a, a lower percentage. And this horse is going to be short. I don't disagree. This horse is not impossible off the figs. I don't know if she's as good as her races make her look. I thought this was a much more competitive, tough spot than she's been in. So I went in a different direction. But she could absolutely win this race. Um, but at the end of the day, we'll take a look at Money Honey. I know this is a tougher spot than Money Honey ran last time, no doubt about it. But the thing about Money Honey is she always had some ability. Uh, Wayne Potts does very good work off the claim overall. His numbers off the claim are very good. I think she may have just sort of found herself last time, and maybe she's got major issues, and that's why they dropped her down, and she'll fall apart, which is absolutely possible. But I think she runs this race. She's as good, if not better, than anybody in this race, and she won't be favored. She's And she's supposed... I mean, unless Hollywood Gina... Hollywood Gina is the speed. Uh, you see, I, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't know about that. Okay. I don't know about that, just for the simple fact that, uh, she, you know, it was a sloppy seal track that day. Uh, and you would think that Hollywood, you know, you know Danny Gargan would want to have them surrounded, put her on the lead and have Barist Barista Vixen mm -hmm. coming from off the pace. Mm -hmm. I just think Money Honey, you know, on dry ground, her two best races have come when she was forward. And maybe she's a little bit slow, but, you know, we don't know what Hollywood Gina is going to do on a, on why a fast Why am track. I worried about Money Honey's stalking a little bit? Oh, I mean, that's fine. I mean, I, well, but I think her best her second race yeah. stalking. Yeah, good I guess. I guess. Yeah. Well, I, don't know. I thought I know I know the the fig she got when she broke her maiden was a, a point higher, but I thought her last race was her best race, and I, I think that was in part because she was loose. She got loose on him. So yeah, I mean maybe she just ran well. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't like Hollywood Gina, who won a sloppy sealed track. Um, you have Rudy's horse, Calabogue Sound, second. I believe it's Boogie. Yeah, this horse took some money first Calaboogie time out. Calaboogie Sound? Calaboogie Sound, I believe, yes. That's what, what does I that think mean? That's what, uh, I think that's what Greg called him. Greg looked it up on... Uh, I will never argue with Greg the races. Yeah. Rudy has good numbers off of uh, claims, but usually they're maidens first time out. I don't know what to make of this horse. This horse beat a horrendous field last horrendous time. Field. Horrendous field. Horrendous field. But if Hollywood Gina <laughs> and Honey Money put a little pace on, gets an extra half furlong off the win, I don't know. Which price kidding. is she? You're First of all, she's possibly two. faster than Honey Money. So if you like her, you're hoping the pace is slow, number one, which is will be because the paces are always slow around here. Um, but... I mean, she's going to be forward in this race. I don't think she's worse than first or second early. Calaboogie Sand? She's not even worse than third early, I'll tell you yeah, that. Yeah, she, she's supposed to sit third, right? Maybe sit second. Mm. Maybe be in front. Depends what the three does. You're not confident in the three. What, what about Kadota Pay? 
I, I thought she was she was perfectly logical in this race. She ran into a horse that ran out of her skin last time. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I thought she was okay. Yeah, she could win. Pick the pieces. She could win. Karamoka, my Clean horse. Back. Last time was the time. Last time was Karamoka time. Karamoka did run well last time. What they about, um, you don't have, uh, what? I thought Noda's horse was interesting. And I almost, I had a tough time Master here. Master of Hope? Yeah. Well, how could she possibly win other than, Noda has ho horrible numbers off the claim, by the way. When Sprints, he's three for 29 with a 92 cent ROI. Her last race was atrocious. Her figures are, are, are low. Well, her last race was atrocious. You throw the muddy tracks out. She's two for two on fast ground. And, but her uh, last race was atrocious. One for one on the fast ground. She won the race on the right, good. I know, her last I know race it is. 50 I, likes here. I know it is, but you she, do? she's off the claim. It was a blistering pace. I mean, about as incredibly fast a pace for that level as you'll ever see. He's off the, the race claim. completely and totally is. <clears throat> and I told you, he has terrible numbers off the claim. He's three for 29, 10% with, with sprint, dirt sprints, 92 cents. He's seven for 44 overall, 16% and twenty-seven. So the numbers off the claim are not good, actually. Um, wow, this will have to be a different horse. I mean, she should be 50 to one in this race. Well. But you never know. It is the notice. Anything's possible, I suppose. Race number eight. Race number eight's a funny race, right? Yes. Distance. <laughs> Isn't distance really the odd thing in this race? Yep. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little baffled. And you know what? I just went to the best horse of the race. I went to the old best horse in the race theory, an horse that might not be favored, though I think she should be, but with these connections. If Platinum Painter was trained by Chad Brown, what price would she be in this race? We'll take, a look, five. Her, take a look at the race at first. Plenty of grace. She'd be even, under order. even money, right? I mean, I mean, she'd have to be under even money. Triple fig. She'd be some favorite. She'd, even, she'd be Brown under, she'd be three to five. Yep. I mean, look, there's a giant effort, and I can guarantee you there are no regal glories in here, and last time out, there are no Harvey's Little Goyles in here either. And Lennis, that looked like she could be uh, a nice filly as well. Oh, she's pointing to Diana. She's just, I mean, she is just the best horse in the race. I th and she's the controlling speed and on the inside. And she's supposed to be the controlling speed. And with Jose Lascano, that's, you can t more often than not take that supposed to be well, she, out of the But she's always equation. in front. Yeah, she she's is. always in front. Why would anybody she would be in front with her? Um... I mean, she could just no be, disrespect to the prior rider, but this is a positive rider change. Not that he's done a single thing wrong. Not anything wrong. So when you get wrong. Jose Lisca, especially with Jose, I think yeah, I saw ten for uh, eleven for the last twenty-three. Got some crazy stat on the turf that Greg had for winning like seven of his last thirteen in the turf or something. And this Philly, well now mayor, has kind of been. I mean, I know some of these Vasquez horses have hit the board and stuff, but overall, I can't. I can't think they're happy mm -hmm. with their results on the circuit. But this Philly, you don't think it over thirteen? They're happy. And, and I, I owe for like 35 in the winter at Aqueduct. They haven't won a race up here. On I, paper, I'll tell you what, she's the best on paper, horse. She's, supposed to, she's supposed to beat this field and beat them pretty decisively. And, and the horse that I don't, I don't, I have fourth, because I guess, you know, who knows? Mm -hmm. Why am I supposed to like La Dragon T? We'll take a look at her last race. I mean, she's the horse that's. You actually have a third. <laughs> you keep looking at mine, and I keep looking yeah. at yours. Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, I don't like the seven, so that's why I guess I have her third. She's a loop to Vegas, so maybe she'll be okay going shorter. Mm -hmm. But this race is a total phony. It I wasn't a particularly health. good field, no. and, and, and she just walked on the front end. I mean, this was like. They just knew that she was going to somehow win this race, and it was just a total merry-go-round race. And uh, uh, the second horse, the horse on the inside, probably should have won this race, frankly. Um, I mean, she's all dressed up with nowhere to go, and she may be running at the wrong distance. And and the seven horse, uh, maybe the horse will be favored. It's Chad Brown. That's I don't the know. Lope de Vega. Yeah, she's getting a little. And you know, what the, I mean, the problem They're with both her Lope is Vegas, the two and seven. The, oh, they both are. I'm sorry. The problem is. This is a real kitchen sink too, right? I mean, she's dropping out of the stakes ranks. She's cutting back from a mile and three sixteenths and a mile and a half to a mile and a sixteenth. Blinkers and Lasix, obviously Tyler Gaffleon's not here, so a rider change. I mean, that's five different things you're throwing at her. And you know, and she hasn't done any running in either of her two races. I know, I know, I know. And Chad Brown's just trying something completely different, running her in a shorter race. But she's got no speed. <clears throat> she doesn't hope they're moving up front. Maybe they will be. Um, Kissing Frogs, I have second, you have on top. I'm you just feel hoping that the... Disloyal to Bill, you haven't picked any of his horses recently? I'm just recently? hoping the mile and a quarter, I mean, something else had to have gone wrong last time because she stopped running well, be, well, we'll well before... We'll show her race two back. 
And the race two back, I mean, that, that Philly Toffin's done okay down in South Florida. Wittes is all right. Well, well, wait a second. See, that's my problem. They're not really that good. Are they Here, okay. I'm not saying they're stakes horse. They're okay. Here are Toffin's races. She ran a 78 and a 76 buyer before getting an 89 in the race we're looking at. Or is this her win? No, this that was is, Toffin. Yeah. Okay. She ran 78, 76, 89, and then she ran an 82. So the 89 seems aberrationally high. Wietes ran an 85, and then she went to, to, to Churchill and ran 82 twice. And that was a race off a layoff, too. And she really didn't run very well in those races. That's my concern. My concern is that her figures in Florida, if I was 100% sure that her figures in Florida were rock solid, I'd probably like her in here. Because um, I thought she could stalk the one, and maybe she has some room to move forward. But I'm just a little worried those figures in Florida are not reliable. Fair enough. That's, I worry that she's closer to an 80 by her horse, in which case she just may not even be close to good enough to win this race. I but I picked her second, so. Right. And I think this is an instance where you'd have to get a good price, and I think I will get a price because they will bet Chad, they will bet La Dragon T off the win, they're obviously going to bet Platinum Painter. I do, and I also like the fact that in regards to Kissing Frogs, after that effort last time, I just think it was distance. She didn't miss a beat. She went back to the work tab yeah, 13 days later. Yeah, a mile and a quarter, that race yeah. collapsed. And also something else about her last race. There was a lot of that was That was the second day of the meet. And we listed the turf courses as firm to be in the meet. And they were yielding we on opening rain, day yep. and yielding to good in the second day. So it may have been given the ground, the mile and a quarter, a, a, a pace that collapsed. Um, I, I, I can give her a pass for her last race. And I she'll just, be the right place <clears throat> price to find out today. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not convinced how they're going to bet this race. I'm not convinced La Dragon T is going to take that much money. I'm not convinced that Chad will be favored. I, I think the one... I think she'll be four... She'll be at least four to one. I'm yeah. not... Yeah, I'm not arguing that. I think that. she'll be the fourth choice. Maybe. How is Platinum... I mean, if Platinum Painter is not favored in this race, I don't even know... I don't know, because of connections. I mean, it's a tricky one. They, they see stake face, the Lasix with Chad Brown. They may not concern themselves with distance as much as they should. And by the way, California Queen can win this race. I don't think either one of us is going to be shocked when she Absolutely wins this race. Not. Just not the kind of horse I want to bet Correct. on. Correct. There's too... For a guy who doesn't get bothered by a lot of things, there's too much going on wow. there at, 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 at a price that you're... She's supposed to be a well, bigger price than she's going to be. It also feels like Chad Brown is just sort of saying, I don't know what to do this, Philly. She's not good enough to win the races that I can here's run her all, in. Here's everything. This race came up. It's a mile and a 16th. Let me... Well, she's getting Lasix. She hasn't run on it before for whatever reasons. And so... But now... Well, she couldn't run because there were graded stakes and she right. couldn't run with Lasix on it. Well, it's blinkers, it. the cutback, the, the, the drop in class. Well, it's blinkers a is a desperate move. I mean, it is. Though he has decent numbers with blinkers on. He's trying to do something. He's He's trying to try something new with a horse that's just not very good. Yeah. I mean, that the bottom line is he's just trying to see if Wake I mean, her up a little he's bit. got her in his barn. He's trying to figure out if he what can find a place for her to belong yep. because she's not winning the Wea. She's not winning the Glens Falls. You know what I mean? She's not winning those races. So he's got to find, find some something. middle distance for him. Yeah. He could send it to Mama. He could send not it to Delaware. Not winning the Segura and <laughs> the no, Long no, Island. No. You know, I mean, well, I mean, those are the races that I, obviously I he disagree. thought she belonged in. Right. And he's tried her and is like, no, you know, no. She's not good enough, and he's got other horses that are better for those races. That's the so he's trying to is, find right? out what to do with her. Yeah. I mean, does she have a place somewhere? I mean, I, I we all be... have a place somewhere, Andy. <laughs> I know where you and I have a place, <laughs> and they have padded rooms. Uh, race number nine. I'm showing a replay for race number nine because I wanted to show a replay, but I don't like the horses coming out of the race, and the race was Centurion and Thruster. I guess Centurion maybe a little more distance. I will say one thing: if you bet Thruster in here, tough beat. Oof. Maybe that's why I showed it to punish people that bet Thruster. Punishing yourself. Got a great ride, but no, I didn't bet him. Oh. No. Great ride by Trevor, though. Yes, he yes he did. Yes, he did. Is a tough. Has he won beat. any races since the first weekend? I don't believe Santa so. Michael? I don't believe that so. That guy should win a lot of races in California. He will. Guy can flat he will. out ride. He'll break in. The, he'll break in. Ooh, out there. That was a filth. I didn't even bet that him. Was it was so filthy. painful watching it. Was it? That's why oh we showed God. it. Oh, we gotta go. Yeah, I know. Oh no. Okay, quickly. What do you what do you like here? I'm using two, five, six, nine, twelve. Okay. I'm using six, nine, seven, and nine. The six Caribbean gold is the horse to beat, but is cutting back. It'll be a short price and has had plenty of chances, but is no question the horse to beat. Uh, the nine Elston ran well first time out after completely losing position. It was a race that fell apart, but obviously that race also a year ago, but I'm going to use him. I like the seven Welshman who came to life last time showing unexpected speed in a race that completely fell apart. Now he cuts back, and I thought he was a little interesting. So I'm using six, sevens, and nines, and I put the biggest price on top.
Makes sense. All right. We were having so much fun that all the time just flew by. Naira Betts, head over to Naira Betts if you're not a member. You were so cheery today, it just flew by. You know, I believe in the importance of Match talking 200. horses and taking it seriously. Stop taking my job. <laughs> <laughs> Use the promo code MATCH200 and we will match it to $200 from your initial deposit. Go to NairaBets.com, become a member. We got a 50-50-50 with Pimlico, Churchill Downs, and Belmont. The app and the app only. I agree with Anthony. Make sure you probably want to opt in on this one. Check that out. <coughs> Learn how to use the opt-in <coughs> for these promos on Naira Bets. And finally, uh, bet 25 or more in every stake race at Lone Star, however many there may be, and you'll get $50 back, win, lose, or draw. Use the opt-in for that one, NairaBets.com. 12.30 to 5.30 on America's Day at the races. That means 10 minutes from now. So, Anthony... Get out of here. Make sure you opt in because I didn't get my 15 from yesterday because I forgot to opt in to the 50-50-50. Hey, I'm some, good. You sure? I had I a good week. I got some cash. I had a good week. I got some cash. Okay. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> I, got about, I got about $17, so I could give it to Save you. Save five you, for socks. Yeah, there you go. Have a great day. Johnny I will be up soon with a reprise scratches and changes.